Good morning. I hope this video finds you well. What I'd like to talk to you today about is two-year-olds. Um, I have a, a two-year-old granddaughter and a two-year-old niece. Well, just a recent visit, I noticed quite a few things that I must have forgot. It's been quite a while since I've been around a two-year-old. I noticed a few behaviors and it kind of sparked my interest. So when I got home, I did a little bit of research and actually I, I was quite shocked to find a lot of the things that I did about two-year-olds. And I'd like to share them with you. I have wrote most of them down because it would be too much for me to remember. So, and it was called How Toddlers Think, Understanding and Reasoning 101. I found it extremely helpful and it actually answered a lot of my personal questions uh, about my 16 year old daughter with Rad. How toddlers deal with pain. Um, it says that a toddler makes no distinction between the physical, mental, and emotional. So in their mind, when one of these are hurt, their whole being has been wounded. So you're thinking get a grip when they're throwing a fit you know you're old enough especially when it's a teenager you're old enough to deal with this it's not a big deal and honestly maybe sometimes you're thinking that with a two-year-old as well you know <laughs> but what they're thinking is I'm broken to my soul it's deep in me I am broken fix me I recognize that in my red daughter um, like I said it was very shocking for me to see a lot of the same behaviors okay they ha also had a section on being the bully um, we all know what a two-year-old tantrum looks like and I witnessed one when I was up there my niece had a full-blown tantrum like I had never seen <laughs> what the article said was until around the age of three children believe they are the center of the universe and that everyone else thinks so too Three is also the age that empathy develops. It actually suggested that during the age of two, the roots of empathy are actually growing. And by three, they're developed. And actually how you help that toddler develop those empathy roots is by pointing out to them on their level, it suggested to get down to their level and point out, look, you hurt her. Look, you hit her and now she's crying because that hurt. And pointing those things out to them. Okay, they also talked about reality versus the imagination and the whole fantasy thinking and living in a, a fantasy world and that fanciful thinking. I have had so many therapists point this out that my daughter lives in a fantasy world and she has a very hard time distinguishing what's real and what's not. When talking with her, I have to point out to her, in reality, what's that look like? And she often starts with, well, in my fantasy thinking, because she's starting to recognize that's probably not really going to happen. What I'm wanting, what I'm imagining, what I'm hoping for, in reality probably isn't attainable. When having an, a, a verbal conversation, she's able to stop and think about it. Um, she's not really capable of doing that on her own, in her mind, without verbally expressing it, whether that be talking with me or someone or actually writing it down. What the article had said was, Toddlers engage in magical thinking. They are unable to distinguish reality from fantasy and often attribute living characteristics to inanimate objects. And it gave a few examples. Um, the moon follows them, trees wave to them, and the car sleeps in the garage. Actually, I remember my son had lost his favorite teddy bear. Berry Bear was his name. and. I remember him telling me that he was worried that Barry Bear was scared because he was lost and alone. That really hit home with me that the in-depth amount of imagination and fantasy thinking that my rat daughter is probably experiencing and I don't know if I ever really gave it that much thought. 
um, she's basically t responding as a toddler. That's not coming to my mind right off the bat. And that's the truth of it. So this article really helped me put in perspective. Yeah, you know what, that in that rad child's mind, you know, we can all see the very selfish um, ideas that they have. You can tell that they think they're the center of the universe. You can you can see that clearly. So, and it being a selfish uh, person is actually in, in the list of symptoms. So, this actually helped me understand a little better of, as to why they think that, why my daughter thinks that. It also suggested that the magical thinking is why toddlers have a hard time accepting no. They think if they wish or imagine something, it will happen. I, you know, I've got to be honest, my daughter has actually said that to me. And I don't know if I really took in what she was saying. Um, but she has expressed that she thinks if she wants something bad enough or wishes hard enough that it will happen. So again, there's that I wasn't fully connected with the, the idea of inside she's just a toddler. Okay, another thing that the article talked about with two-year-olds is they really have a problem with they live in the moment, in the here and now. You can't tell a toddler about a birthday party on Saturday if it's Wednesday because they will want to go now. It's all they can think about and when, and they'll ask every 10 minutes if it's time to go. They live fully in the present and don't have the concept of three or four days from now. The furthest ahead they can grasp is after lunch or when you wake up tomorrow. My daughter is constantly telling me, if, if I call her out on something, she will say, I was in the moment. In the moment, I didn't care if I got caught. In the moment, I didn't care what the consequence was. Now I understand that. It also said that two-year-olds are control freaks. Uh, predictability makes toddlers feel safe. That's why they only want the red sippy cup. They have favorite clothes and like their sandwiches cut in a certain way. This rings so true. I'm sure that there are so many of you out there who would say the same thing. Rad kids are control freaks and about things that don't even matter. Again, I have to be honest, these things that don't even matter In my mind, I was attributing to a 16 year old. Why does that matter? This is why. Because they feel in control knowing, having the, a schedule, a toddler size schedule. Actually, I have to be honest, I feel really relieved to have found this article. It's really opened my eyes to a lot of the behaviors that I have seen that I was looking at as stubborn. And don't get me wrong, I believe there's a lot of stubbornness there in, in Rad Kids. But yeah, I'm definitely going to have to give some more thought to this. But I definitely wanted to share it with you guys. Your old needs help learning to manage their emotions. At that age, they're capable of feeling a wide range of emotions. But unlike an older child, a two-year-old has just started the cognitive skills to make sense of them. Mood swings can look like a roller coaster. Um, and although I'm reading about a two-year-old, this is describing my daughter. The difference though that I see with our rat kids, or the older rat kids anyway, their memory skills have developed much more than a two-year-old. So. The problem there, these little grudges that they build up over those little things that they want control over that don't matter, 
they are building grudges and they are actually taking the time to think about revenge ways to get revenge well a two-year-old's not going to do that they they've moved on so i was just really amazed um i don't know maybe some of you have already known these things i did not it like i said it's been many years since I've really been around a two-year-old. Anyway, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this. Um, if you have already recognized this, if you've given it that much thought, I don't know why I hadn't. Um, it seems like I would have ran across this before with all the research that I've done and all of the things that I've looked at and looked up. I don't know why I never thought to look up the behaviors and uh, just the way that uh, a two-year-old would think and what's going on in a two-year-old mind. I just never thought to look it up until now. Anyway, I hope you guys are having a great day. Um, like I said, I would love to hear your thoughts on this. So I will talk to you in the next video. So until then, bye-bye for now.